So I Show Speed is probably the biggest social media influencer in the world right now, depending on who you ask, but specifically with children. But in addition to being a massive social media superstar, Speed is also a demon walking in the flesh, literally. And I, I don't say that lightly. And these are not things that I enjoy saying, but I just have to call it how I see it. Because here's the thing, I have children. I have two small children. And I'm always thinking about who's gonna be the next generation of leaders that are going to rise up and influence the next generation. And it's so sad because nowadays the, the standard to be a leader has completely diminished. Completely diminished. The only standard that these kids have in choosing who their leaders are going to be are solely based on social standards, are solely based on how many followers do you have on social media? How many views do you get per video? How many people do you have on your live stream? How much clout do you have? That's the only standard that there is in choosing leaders when it comes to these children, when it comes to the next generation. And I know this is going to be a harsh statement, but I show speed at this current point in time is bringing a lot of these children closer to death. The reason why I say that is because if you do not serve Jesus, if you do not serve Jesus, then the Bible says that you are serving the devil. If you're not with Jesus, then you're against him. And a lot of y'all don't understand that. If you're not with Jesus, then you are against Jesus. There's no middle ground. There's no in between. Either you're saved or you're not. Either Jesus is your Lord and Savior or he's not. I show speed... Um, Yesterday, he had a conversation with David Lind, which I'm going to show you in a second. In this conversation that he had with David Lind, which I truly believe was not an accident, was set up by God. But this conversation has inspired this video today. But first, I just want to give you a little bit of context as to who I show speed is. And more specifically, I want to give some substance to the claims that I made in the beginning of this video in stating that he is literally a demon walking in the flesh. I really can't watch too much of that. Um, but a lot of people will say like, you know, Nick, you're looking too far into it. This is just speed. This is just him having fun. This is just him being funny. This is just speed, right? All right, but I guess that's 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 a response from a person who is dead spiritually, who doesn't have any discernment. Because even just that short little five seconds of him spazzing out, of, of him summoning these demons, that bothered my spirit. And the Bible says not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not put the Holy Spirit in situations where God's spirit that lives within us believers is going to be uncomfortable. And right then in, in this moment, as I'm watching this video, my spirit feels uncomfortable. And that's an indication that this is much deeper than just flesh and blood. And we already know this. The Bible says that, you know, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It, this Everything that we see in this world, it, it it's so much deeper than what we could actually see with our two eyes. There's an entire spiritual world, a, a spiritual warfare, warfare that is going on that we cannot see. And when I see videos like this, it's so obvious that a lot of people are being deceived. A lot of people are being deceived. And I want to show you another video because... Maybe y'all are like, oh, it's just one video. Like, you know, Nick, I, I don't really understand. Well, once again, here's another video of Speed. It sounds like he's talking to a girl on stream. It sounds like he's about to pray for this girl or something. But just take a listen to how this eventually ends up. Because like I said, it's demonic, it's dark, 
And this dude needs a, a whole lot of prayer. That's all I can say. All right, Shawty, are you closing your eyes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now think about something that you like, okay? Are you thinking? Mm -hmm. and, just, and just think about grabbing it, okay? Think about grabbing it. Thinking about just stressing it, okay? And just think about having it in your arms, all right? Yeah. Is your eyes still closed? <laughs> and see as a child you might think that this is all fun and games you might think that this is innocent you might not see anything wrong with this but that's because most children are not spiritually mature enough to discern what they're even looking at. But for people who have eyes and ears, like Revelation says, let those who have ears hear what the Spirit is saying. Us who have ears, this is not normal behavior. This is extremely demonic be behavior. And even just to take it a step further, Maybe y'all know Prophet Lovi, maybe you don't. But this is a video of him actually dealing with a demon inside of this girl here, face to face. And I want you to notice the similarities in this demon that's being delivered from this girl and the demons that you just witnessed inside of Speed. <laughs> Now I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to answer me clearly. How long have you been inside of her? Two years. Clearly. I said two years. Listen, clearly, respectfully. How long? Two years. How old was she when you entered her? She was one, one years old. How old is your daughter? She's 11. So how did you want to kill her? I was so supposed to stress her. I was supposed to stress her. I was supposed to give her cancer. Cancer. At what Look, maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm the only person that sees the similarities between the demons inside of Speed and the demons inside of this girl right here. Maybe I'm tripping. But I really don't think I am. I really don't think I am. But I want to show you one, one more clip from Prophet Lovi, and then I want to take you to David Lynn. Because something happened in this David Lynn encounter that I'm going to show you that is very similar to this encounter that happened with Prophet Lovi. Why don't you want to open your eyes? There's too much light! Where's the light coming from? I don't know! Can you see me? Can you see me? No. What do you see when you look at me? I can't see you. What do you see? I see a light. You just see light. Yeah. Now that same light is about to enter a new darkness. You have to go. Yeah. No. Yeah. I want to finish her. I want to finish her. I don't want to. So understand what's happening here. Prophet Lovi confronted the demon. He said, how come you can't open your eyes? How come you can't look at me? The demon said, because there's too much light. That light that the demon is referring to is the Holy Spirit inside of Prophet Lovi. Because here's the thing that a lot of people don't understand. Bruh, these demons, a lot of these demons know the Bible better than uh, Christians do. The devil knows the Bible. The devil knows scripture. The devil tempted Jesus with scripture. Do y'all not understand that? But the point I'm trying to make is that when a demon is actually in the presence of a, of a man that is filled truly, truly, truly filled with the Holy Spirit, that light is too much for that darkness because something has to happen. Either... That person who, who has those demons has to get up and literally leave, physically leave, or the demon has to leave. Something has to happen. happen. It, is, it is confrontational. 
A demon cannot come face to face with a man who is filled, truly filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and nothing happened. Something has to happen. And keep that in mind as we transition to this video right here. So like I said, this is Speed in the UK, I believe. David Lynn, Pastor David Lynn, he's a street pastor. He's a man filled with the Holy Spirit. He's a man of God. It's not by chance that these two happen to meet in the same place across the country in, in a place where they are both not even from. This is not by chance. But take a listen to this encounter because it, it's very similar to the last video that we just watched. I want to ask you. I want to ask you something, man. Yeah, ask me something. Because I watch your videos, man. I actually made a. I made a review of one of your videos. All right, what is it? So um, I forgot what it's called, but you made a video. I want. I want to know, man. Are you gay? Gay, bro. Only for Ronaldo. All right, all right. Come, come, come. Listen, hold that, hold that, hold that. Hold that, hold that for a second. Hold, hold on, I want to ask you something, man. Listen, man. I know your father is a Christian. Okay. Are you a Christian? Am I a Christian? Okay. See, that's a very, you know, great question, you know what I'm saying? But let me ask you this, okay? No, 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 no. Answer the question first. It's okay. a great question. Because a Christian is someone that's repentant of their sins. That doesn't support sexual immorality. That's not walking for fame, but living for Jesus. Someone who's denied themselves pick up their cross daily and follow me. I'm not against you trying to make money okay, or right, making right, good right, music, okay. but if you're a Christian, you need to repent of your sins. Otherwise, just like any person here, not just you, you hey, need, okay, you'll find right. yourself in hell. All right, okay, all the way. So are you a hey, Christian? Hey, let me talk. All right. Are you a Christian? Okay, first of all, I came here to see Ronaldo. I'm in Manchester right now. You're asking me questions about God, okay? You know, I love God, you know, but... Just, just if you... I, but, hey, just no, if hey, hey, hey. I want to know. Hey, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. You know, it's funny. A lot of people say, oh, I love God. <laughs> but y'all, do y'all understand that there's only one God? Y'all be thinking that there's a whole bunch of other gods. There's only one God. Jesus is God. So if you love God, you love Jesus because Jesus is God. So this should be a very simple question. Are you a Christian? Yes or no? If you love God, the answer should be yes. Let me tell you this. Stop talking to me, sir. Have a nice day. <laughs> I thought I thought so. I thought so. Yeah, no, sir, I thought so. No, but you see what happened during that encounter. You see what happened. Remember what I just said. A demon who comes into the presence of a man who is truly filled with the Holy Spirit. Just like that little girl that we watched in Prophet Lovi. Just like this little girl who couldn't open her eyes because the demon couldn't open her eyes because the light that was that was coming, that was radiating from Prophet Lovi, that same light was blinding that demon. It was confronting that demon. It's no different in this situation. The demons that are inside of speed are being confronted by the light of God inside of David Lynn. And you got one of two choices. You can either get delivered and get saved right there in that moment, or you got to dip. And you saw what happened. Speed dipped. Those demons inside of speed said, hey, it's time to go. It's time to go. And you know why the demons said that? Because like I said, nothing happens just for no reason, especially with two people at, at, at this caliber in this moment in, in, in life, nothing happens for no reason. Speed is in the UK to watch a soccer match, I think. David Lynn is in the UK to preach. They're not from the UK. The chances of them meeting in a different country are slim to none, but God made it happen. During this, this very video that you just watched, the video that's on the screen right now, Speed was live streaming. He had uh, maybe like 20,000 people, if not more, watching at that point in time. But obviously, the way that Speed streams and then uploads his videos to YouTube, there's a potential that millions and millions of people are going to see this video. So the demons in that moment had to make a decision. Hey, 
if we allow Speed to sit here and say that he's a Christian, that goes against the agenda that the demons have. The agenda that the demons have is the same agenda that the devil has. The devil's agenda, according to the word of God, is to steal, kill, and destroy. If Speed sits here in front of millions of people and says, I'm a Christian, don't you think that that would spark an interest amongst potentially hundreds of thousands of people to get to know God at some capacity, not saying that they're all going to get saved, but just an interest to get to know God at some capacity, because this is a level of influence that speed has. He has a a cult like influence, but you see what happened. He walked away because those demons, they have an agenda. And I want to talk to you about the agenda that these demons have, because maybe there's some of you who still don't believe that demons are real. Maybe there's some of you that have never watched my videos, but you clicked on this video because I'm talking about speed and you like speed. Well, I need y'all to listen up because Matthew chapter 12, verse 22 Let me break this down for you. It says, then a demon possessed man who was blind and couldn't speak was brought to Jesus. He healed the man so that he could both speak and see. A man filled with demons. He can't see. He can't speak. Jesus has one encounter with him and instantly he is healed and the demons are cast out. Now the man can see. Now he can suddenly speak. Obviously, verse 23, the crowd is amazed and they asked, could it be that Jesus is the son of David, the Messiah? Could it be that Jesus is the the Messiah? Could it be that Jesus is God? But the Pharisees, they heard about the miracle. The Pharisees are the unbelievers, the haters, the, the religious ones that rejected Jesus, that said that he wasn't the Messiah. They said, No wonder he can cast out demons because he gets his power from Satan, who is the prince of demons. So the Pharisees are saying, look, he's not the Messiah. He's not God. He's working for Satan. And that's why he can cast out demons because he's working for Satan. But listen to what Jesus says. Such a perfect response as always. Jesus never misses. He says, any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. A town or family splintered by feuding will fall apart. And if Satan is casting out Satan, he is divided and fighting against himself. His own kingdom will not survive. In other words, what Jesus is saying to these Pharisees is if I'm working for, if if I'm working for Satan, why would I be casting out demons? That would be literally tearing apart Satan's kingdom. So how how would that make sense that I'm working for Satan? This is what Jesus is telling to the Pharisees. But he also says this. He says his own kingdom will not survive. So did you catch that? Jesus Christ, God, literally said, Matthew 12, verse 26, that Satan has his own kingdom. Satan has his own kingdom. Did y'all did y'all know that? Did y'all know that yes, God has a kingdom and Satan has a kingdom. So that means God has soldiers and Satan has soldiers, right? God has people who he's raising up and who he's blessing and Satan has people who who he's raising up and, and who he's blessing. Although it's, it's not a blessing, but you get what I'm trying to say, right? But check this out. Matthew 12, verse 30, it says, anyone who isn't with me opposes me. This is Jesus talking. He said, anyone who isn't with me opposes me and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. So remember what I said. If you're not with Jesus, then you're against him. If you're against him, then you're working with Satan. So let me ask you a question. You remember what just happened? Speed is confronted by Pastor David Lynn. Are you a Christian? Speed says, stop talking to me. And he he runs away. He speeds off, right? 
So what does that tell you? If he was working with God, then he would say, yeah, I'm a Christian. Or because some people don't like to say that they're Christians. They like to say that they have a relationship with, with Jesus. Listen, in this moment, either one would have been okay to say, but he took neither of those two routes. He took the third option and he walked off and he didn't claim he, he didn't claim anything that had to do with Jesus. So if you're not working with Jesus, like the verse says, anyone who isn't with me is, 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 a, is opposed to me. So if you're not with Jesus and you're opposed to Jesus. So let me ask you a question. Who is, is giving speed all this success, all this fame, all this fortune? If he's not with God, and the Bible says that if you're not with God, then you're against God, then obviously God is not blessing you. God is not giving you a platform so that you can spit in his face. God is not giving you a platform so that you can mislead people. So if God did not give speed this platform, then who gave speed the platform? Well, the only obvious answer would be Satan. Because like the scripture just said, Satan has a kingdom. Satan can raise people up, give them status, give them money, give them clout, give them influence in order to do the will of Satan. And what's the will of Satan? To steal, kill, and destroy. Satan doesn't want people to go to heaven. Satan doesn't want people to know God. Satan wants people to fall in love with the things of this world. Satan wants people to fall in love with their fleshly desires. Satan wants people to keep lusting and keep smoking, keep drinking, keep cussing, keep being disrespectful, keep living for this world. And up until this point, all of those things have been apparent in speed. And it's so sad because, you know, it's not a bad thing to have money or to want money or to want to provide for your family, or to want to have nice things, or to want to have status, or, or anything like that. It's not bad. But what is the spirit behind those ambitions? Are the spirits behind your ambitions the spirit of God or the spirit of Satan? Because if the spirit behind those ambitions is of the spirit of God, then when you get the money, when you get the clout, when you get the status, when you get the all of the platform, then you will glorify God because the, the true spirits behind that elevation was from God. And you can't help but glorify him. But when the spirits behind your ambition are not from God, then we see what we see what happens. You turn into speed. You turn into a, a, a super successful guy from a worldly standpoint. But what does it profit a man to have the entire world but lose his soul? Because just like King Solomon said, who was the richest man ever, and he, he will remain the richest, but not only the richest, the, the wisest man to ever live, King Solomon, Ecclesiastes, what did he say? He said, this life is meaningless. This is coming from a person who had it all. King Solomon had everything that you could ever imagine, everything that you could ever want. And King Solomon said, it's all meaningless. It's all vanity. It means nothing. I can work hard. I can have success. I can have money. But at the end of the day, I'm going to pass away and I can't take it with me. Or I'm going to pass away and what? I, I leave it to my family. I leave it to my children. And they're just going to blow it off. They're just going to spend it. They're not going to have the same level of appreciation that I had because they didn't work for it. They just inherited it. So if we know that we cannot take nothing with us when we pass away, and we also know that we are all going to pass away, how come we are putting so much effort and ambition and striving in the things of this world if we know for a fact that we cannot take it with us? The only thing that we can take with us for eternity is our relationship with Jesus. And that's a fact. 
and that's a fact. That is the only thing that we can take with us for eternity. So how come there's not more of us talking about the value in having a, re a relationship with Jesus? Oh, it's because we live in a fallen world. It's because the kingdom of this world, which is ran by the devil, has an opposing agenda, but you're still asleep. You don't realize that there's a spiritual battle going on right before your very eyes that you cannot see. You don't realize it. So like the verse says, either you are with God or you're against God. Matthew 12 verse 30 Anyone who isn't with me opposes me, and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. You need to pick a side. You can't be on the fence about this relationship with God. You can't be on the fence about your salvation because either you're saved or you're not. There's no in-between. And when it comes to speed specifically, when it comes to I show speed specifically, those of y'all who support speed those of y'all who, who love Speed, who, who watch all of his videos, because this dude gets millions and millions of views per video. If you actually care about him, then you need to recognize a truth. And that truth is that I show Speed, like all of us, one day is going to pass away. And if you cared about Speed while he was here on earth, I would imagine that there is a part of you that cares about speed in his afterlife as well. And just like Takeoff, who recently passed away, instead of just saying RIP when these people pass away, how about we actually take the steps necessary to better ensure that the people that we look up to, not saying that I look up to speed, I don't look up to speed, but I'm saying these children that look up to speed, Let's make sure that they're actually resting in peace because not everybody is resting in peace. Not everyone will go to heaven. Not everyone will go to heaven. And as it appears right now, speed is not on the path that leads to eternal life, that leads to resting in peace, but he's on a much different path. And if you support speed, then you should stop supporting the demonic activity that speed is involved in. And you should bring him to a state of repentance. You should pray for speed that he is, de is delivered of these demons. You should pray for speed that he finds Christ. And that is my prayer right now in the name of Jesus. So look, what do y'all think, man? Am I going too hard? And once again, I'm not making this video because I dislike speed. I said I feel bad for the kid. I said, I'm sure he's under so much pressure of, of having money, of having status, of being a provider of his family. And these demons are just eaten. These demons are just eaten. And I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus that he is delivered of these demons. Because even now, even after everything that Speed has done against God, he can still turn it around. God can still take that and he can still use it for good. God can still take that platform and he can use it to glorify the kingdom and he can use it to bring people closer to God if that is truly what speed wants. And if you're a fan of his, a supporter, you should want that. You should. So let me, let me know what you think. Like this video. Get in my comments. I'm out.